Well, welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your lunch. Some more networking. We're on the home stretch. So, like I said before, uh, this is uh, basically a bit of a recap, a bit of opinions, what happened on this uh, meeting over the last two days, different topics, and uh, looking forward, uh, what we did right, what we did wrong, et cetera, et cetera. And we are doing it a little different from uh, what is advertised up there as far as the cast, because uh, Randy, has, al has already left for a flight. So it will be uh, Bob that, will, uh, uh, that was a co-moderator on the safety program. So he will be uh, part of the panel because the idea is that we have all the moderators from the, the panels uh, and presentations we had over the last two days. Uh, we'll have them up there and uh, ask them for their opinion uh, and uh, that will then be followed that uh, I will be maybe a little aggressively go around the room and hand you a microphone uh, to see what your opinion was, what we can do better, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, if I hand you the microphone and you really don't want to say anything, that's okay too. But uh, if we have enough people to put up their hand, what I have to do is be uh, walking around the room. So if we could um, get to the panel. So Bob, Perti. Like I said, Bob is doing safety. Perti will uh, do a, a training. Jaws, sustainability. And we have Glenn Hughes, which is now uh, Convinced and an expert and a fan of our uh, new app, EUCR, so he will take that part. So thank you very much. So perhaps uh, we start with you, Perti. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, Do you have a mic? I yeah. don't. Okay. Can you hear my voice? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, now it's better. Uh, okay, where to start? So it's of course honor to be here that you, uh, you would like to hear something that you know from my side. And to be as moderator this morning, so it was, um, how can I say, a new experience. I've been running a different type of the things during my lifetime. And now it's, I'm, I felt a bit comfortable this year to be uh, standing uh, right here than it was uh, it, that it, uh, it was last year. So meaning that training, practice, on the job type of the training it really affect. Even I can learn some new things. So yeah, I covered uh, or we discussed three topics: the presentation what I gave, and then we had uh, um, we touched uh, the ULE UL, uh, challenge, and then we have the panel discussion, um, which was uh, rather fruitful. Um, in my presentation, so we wanted to, to of course, to, to raise the a bar this year a bit from the last year. Like, like you probably saw that, you know, we have two new products or the new two approach to, to training in general. The, the ULE awareness was the one and then uh, the micro learning to, to support the, the learners kind of experience. <coughs> And, and those things, what we have it on the one slide, what was a kind of a, we called them a tools of, of ULD training. It's there. It took, let's say, five years together with, uh, with to build up that. And we personally really, and we, I think we all hope that, you know, um, the people, not the industry, the people will uh, take the advantage of, of those what we have created. So. And that was it. Uh, and then um, one part was uh, ULD challenge. So we wanted to challenge the audience and, and, and the people of the companies who you represent uh, to take part of the, of the challenge and, and uh, try to do our best to, to indicate all the, um, and how can I say, weak points of, of the operations and see and analyze 
the effectiveness of, of the training, what we, can, what we can achieve in order to provide the training for the entire workforce who is taking, taking part of, 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 of those things or responsibilities what we design. I mean, taking part of the project, taking part of the operations, what we decide. And that would be, I really hope that uh, that project will be materialized. And I was positively, I'm not saying surprised, but pleased that, that there are some indicators that uh, two of the airlines have already mm, showed their interest. I'm not saying who they are, but... I hope that they are able to, we are able to take uh, the next step and, and plan to, to get a, there are room for, for others as well, just, just to raise your hand or contact Bob and I'm myself so it's, it's, uh, we, can, we can make it happen. So it's, it's a journey which we, 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 we don't know the journey yet, but we know the starting point and we know the challenge. So and it's, it's, uh, we, can, we can make things happen, I'm quite confident. Um, then we with panelists, so uh, it was an interesting discussion what we have it and, 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 and uh, individual responsibility uh, was highlighted. And on the other hand, the, the, what is the responsibility of the, of the management to, to provide the needed tools for the workforce who are at the front line and uh, uh, bring the message what we have, what we have discussed here to tell them that hey, it's time to now it's time to act and keep the support what we are doing so and what the frontline people are able to to, to to do things better so that was the one thing um, of course we then we discussed that the panelists discussed about um, about uh, the procedures and standards that um, and Vivian for instance highlighted that as a ground handling company it's a bit difficult to to handle the thing that if they have hundred more than hundred uh, uh, airline clients or customers, and every every airline has their own procedures, even to, to put some um, um, extra features to the standards. So again, it's getting kind of a giving a headache to 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 ground handling company. So awareness, uh, communication, it's important. That was the number one. We need to be com communicated from down to top, top to down. Um, of course, have opening, try to do our best to, to, to support uh, uh, open, um, open uh, how can I say, communication channels. Uh, not to punish the people when they are telling uh, if, if I did something wrong try to learn the lesson and make things happen better. Yeah. Awareness training. Training is integral part of, of that. And, and that's what they, the people said in the panel. Blood and money, those are the two words. One person said that blood and money, and if you will tell, you know, I, to avoid the blood, but uh, um, I think that, you know, the money can be saved if we, we we, we do things uh, a bit better than we have done it. Sorry, this was my monologue, so sorry about that. I'm probably too talkative. <laughs> Thank you, Purdy. And I guess uh, it's safe to say uh, we continue our relationship. We keep building. It took five years for the first one. I think it'll be a lot faster for the next one. And the aim actually is for those who haven't been there in Bangkok, and there's probably a few, it's a few years back, ULD Care has also uh, created something that's called ULD Conduct. Uh, I don't remember, how many remember that? Uh, it didn't take off in a big way, but uh, it would be one thing that we uh, really should pursue, because there is no such thing in the industry, and it's a, uh, it's kind of simple, it's 10 steps, and eventually we will have a video uh, for each of the steps. As you've seen, we've got videos now for three or four of them, but we're gonna continue on that vein so that eventually, if you are serious and willing and, and, and wanting to join uh, the ULD Care Code of Conduct, that we have material behind that you can easily do it. 
Okay, so thank you, Purdy. Uh, next, can I ask Josh? Oh, be before you go, it slipped my mind. I've got, to, I've got to remind you all, because we had some feedback, we cannot talk about dollars and cents because it goes uh, uh, directly against the antitrust that I read at the beginning. So let's be careful not to mention dollars and where this crept up. I believe it was the discussion when we, uh, that we had when we uh, were uh, talking about perhaps there should be a penalty or some charge to uh, a, a ground handlers or whoever screws up the container and Let's just stay away from it and keep it up here. We, we, don't, we can't afford any lawsuits, okay? <laughs> okay, Josh, sorry, I had to say that. Okay, so I'll think about that because I wanted to have a whole story about recycling and the cost involved, you know, what it would cost you. Okay, I'll skip that. Um, no, so for me, of course, um, I did sustainability uh, topic and I've done it for a couple of years now, um, actually. Um, it's it's interesting sustainability as a topic you know sustainability is very broad and, and in my mind pretty fake you know it, it's everywhere everybody does it it's all about the environment and the climate and um, i think w when you think about what we discussed yesterday for me the big takeaway was because i created the whole uh, thing with the panel and the presentations it's more thinking outside of the box right and, and i hope that was the takeaway you will have so that was my takeaway is that it's not always right there in front of you, but it could be somewhere else, in the back or somewhere in the vicinity, but it's not always in your face, basically. And actually, uh, funny, uh, Frodo was on the, on the panel this morning, and um, actually, I, I loved it when you said the bio ULD, even though it was sort of cynically, and there probably will not be a bio ULD, but who cares? You have to be ambitious, right? So. You did take something away. Uh, I mentioned the word biodegradable. So people have put something in their mind and then uh, you're um, from a manufacturer. So start thinking about the bio door, for example, right? Why don't have a biodegradable door? And I think that's good for us as practical. And that's what I also want to create some practical items, right? So think about practical, the biodegradable door or the easy removable panel, you know, it has to be practical for all of us because what I heard in all the sessions, it has to be practical. People have to comply, people have to be trained, people have to understand, we have to keep it simple. Same thing with sustainability, same thing with safety, same thing with digitalization. Keep it simple, stupid. And that's important. And I was talking to uh, Greg because I've been sitting uh, two days next to him. So he also says, you know, the people on the ground, you know, they want to have it simple. They want to work there, do their job on a day-to-day -day basis, but don't overcomplicate it. And if they understand what's expected of them, then we can achieve something. When it comes to sustainability, I think it's in our day-to-day -day life. Um, I think we need to look forward and ahead. And as ULD Care, we're only such a small piece of, of that whole chain. So I hope when it comes to recycling, when it comes to straps, nets, that the manufacturers here in the room um, and the, the end users in this room think about the future. What's next? How can I procure a ULD, which is the bio ULD? I'm going to register that one probably. <laughs> well, it could be, right? Just, just think about that. Those requirements, the standard requirement is very important. And as a ULD care, what I also said is that ULD care can play a role there. Um, the toolbox could be one thing, uh, could be the label which uh, VR brought up. It's just a general idea, it's a pitch, and I think it will help us move forward. It's all about safety, I get it. Uh, regulations are very important. I saw uh, Randy's uh, presentation this morning. Yes, that's extremely important, but sustainability is uh, at the same level as everything else what we're talking about here, digitalization, safety, regulations, compliance, training, it all has to do with each other and it has to work with each other. So that's basically the takeaway from sustainability. Thank you, Josh. Yes, Bob. If I can just, uh, I can't remember who I was talking to yesterday evening, somebody, the label that you gave, gave out yesterday, which like, like a label on a washing machine, Somebody yesterday told me that from, was it you, Glenn? 
it was Glenn told me that from 2020. Well, I'm not sure of the date, but yeah. Yeah, it's coming that when you board the aircraft, there will be one of these labels outside the door. So you will, am I right? That you'll be getting on an A or an E. Whoa. So that's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. It's for only for the uh, EU-registered aircraft for now, but I can see that spreading. So, I mean, we're pushing on an open door here that if the aircraft are going to be labelled in terms of their um, uh, sustainability, well, why not for ULD? So, so I wasn't aware of that, but it's actually quite logical when you buy a car, same story, of course. Uh, I don't know if uh, Ben was aware of that as well. No, uh, interesting. So that you come up with similar IDs. There probably are studies uh, out there on the internet as well. So I think that label, of course, that is the takeaway. We're pitching IDs here, practical IDs, and the label is one of them. But also, for example, the recycling tech, what I mentioned earlier, that understanding how to recycle, how to dispose the ULD, I think, that is part of ULD care of who we are. We don't have to be a regulator, but we can recommend what you can do. Yeah. And, and also, can I add, um, because Glyn reminded me, uh, Tiaka has a very extensive blue sky project with a huge amount. I, I had a quick look, and I think it's 29 pages of guidance notes. Um, I'm not sure how many of those apply specifically to ULD, but certainly, I mean, so there is a, a ready-made um, template for, for us to work with and I think certainly ULD Care will be um, looking at that and trying to work out how we can basically piggyback our efforts on top because no point in us trying to reinvent the wheel um, and if, if there's a ready-made um, setup there let's do it so I, I think that's also a big takeaway <coughs> from the sustainability track Okay, thank you both. Uh, yes, you're up. <laughs> thank you, Urs. Actually, I'm going to start with an apology, and I've just seen myself on camera. Three days ago, when I packed, this shirt fit me perfect. Uh, <laughs> I've been indulging, obviously, in a little bit too much of the uh, Greek hospitality. So for the people in the front rows, I'm, a button may come your way. So I'm going to try and breathe in for most of this. Um, Thank you very much again to you guys for asking me to moderate what, what I thought, have to be honest, the, the easiest panel I'm ever going to moderate. It was after such a great demonstration about a wonderful tool with a group of highly professional, passionate, knowledgeable panelists and a really engaged audience. Um, so I, I feel somewhat of a fraud from kind of going through and highlighting some of the, the takeaways from me because they were the takeaways of everybody in the room. Um, but first of all, I, I was just overwhelmed by the encouraging support that you got for that tool. So congratulations again to you guys. Um, and it's all of you guys, not just the secretariat, not just the working group, not just the people working in the pilots, but it's through the efforts and the engagement and the motivation from wanting to work for your community that really drove you to put together what I think is going to be, and I'm going to steal somebody else's phrase. I can't remember who it said. Somebody said it's a game changer. I think that the EU uh, UCR is definitely going to be a game changer. I think it's more than just an EU CR. We had this discussion before. You know, I was with IATA. We had the airway bill and then the e-airway bill, which was just the digitalization of the airway bill document. But the tool that you guys have developed is so much more than just the digitalization of a piece of paper. The, the data that it's going to create, um, the ability to actually avoid wastage, Somebody else used a great phrase, benefits for all. Very rare do you actually come across a tool where everybody that uses it on both sides of the equation can get equal benefit. Um, usually it's a case of I'm doing something for my benefit and I'm sorry, you're just going to have to do this. But it was great to see that you know, airlines, ground handlers, and I think when you go out to the forwarding community as well, you will find that there will be a lot of support uh, in that area as well. Um, also, it was great there was the discussion about the data mining opportunities. You know, the amount of data that you get on a piece of paper is defined to the information you can put on that one, whatever it is, nine by five inch piece of paper. Sorry for using inches for our European people out there, that is uh, 24 by 11 and a half or something. Um, oh God, he was checking. Um, <laughs> um, so I think that's actually crucial that once you digitalize information, the possibilities then become endless of what you can do with that. 
And then people will actually say, well, if I can do this and I can overlay it with something else that I'm capturing, now I can actually create some real value. And once you start getting industry data and analytics, you can then start targeting parts of the world. We say, well, perhaps we need to do more training, which comes back to what Pody was saying. So I, I think that there is a, a huge, huge um, opportunity going down that road. Value proposition, again, when a tool needs everything that we do, whether or not it's a solution service opportunity, has an elevator pitch. And some of my former employee, oh, sorry, a former employer of mine, you know, we would have some products which were so complicated, you needed to be in the Burj Al Khalifa to, for the elevator pitch to work. In other words, you needed about 27 minutes to be able to present that very simple idea. What you guys have developed, you can actually de you know, present elevator pitch in any building with an elevator of two floors. It's a great concept. Again, KISS principle, it's perfect, it's simple, um, it's eloquently put. So I think that really puts the right emphasis on this being a really successful tool. I think it also, it's a game changer for ULD Care. I think it allows you to do all the other stuff that you want to do. Once you get that data, once you can really target where the challenges are, you can then use the community that you've got to put together a whole series of other value propositions. Um, there were some notes of caution. We do need to go for full supply chain engagement. You know, the value of this tool is actually going from start to end of the process, so it becomes a full chain of custody. Um, I think that's crucial. Um, again, somebody else was cautious to say that, yes, it's great that we can actually have photos at the beginning, but we've got to make sure that there is adequate training and awareness of how to use the photos. So don't just take a picture of one side and says there was no damage when the other side is actually missing. Um, so there needs to be some very strong guidance. And I think, to me, that's one of the other key takeaways, is that the success of the tool rollout will very much be premised on having a very clear, simple, accessible training program and a clear strategy of how you roll it out. So it's no good if one person, you know, one organization has it, but all of their customers and partners have no idea what it is, then you kind of lose the, the other side of that discussion and, and debate. Um, and also it was great that there was a lot of discussion already before you've rolled it out that people were saying, well, next version should have this, the next release should have that. And I think that, again, is, is linked to the excitement. People were seeing not just the, to the opportunity today, but how that can actually create even further opportunities t uh, for tomorrow. So that's just kind of a few, few highlights that I took away. Thank you. Now I wanted to comment on the EUCR app. What, what we also noticed on that same table is that actually there's also a demand for um, a repair application, right? Where you can understand what, what the damages are. It has to do with the training as well, understand what's allowed, what's not allowed, because we noticed that sort of the whole conversation went from EUCR, which is basically the location messaging, into a, a repair uh, or a damage application. Everybody wanted phase two to be you know, included with the pictures, uh, the damage limitations, understanding what's possible, what's not, understanding who's the manufacturer, where does it need to go to. So I was thinking about that as well. If, if you ask the people, well, there, I counted, there are 35 people in the audience, so we miss a couple. Um, I, I'm very curious if that's, the EUCR is one thing, but, but the damages, the, the whole repair part of this business is extremely important. I think uh, Paul also said something about that. It, it, it's just, it seems that it, it really ignites something or people start discussing that. We, we first started discussing just digitalization and suddenly we came into the whole damage part of things. So I feel that there, we should, as ULD Care, look into that part a bit more because it seems there's a demand for that. Yeah, uh, thank you, Justin. You're absolutely right. I picked up on this as well. Um, I mean, we, we always knew that having the photographs would open the door for keeping track of, of damage. I mean, it's, it, and, and where and, 